I, uh, Mayor Mac Girding, call the uh, City Council meeting, special budget meeting for April 22nd, 2024 to order. Uh, Clerk, will you please start by calling the roll? Here. 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 Absent. Um, Councilor Cameron will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Next on our agenda is recognition of indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Uh, agenda item number four is comments by visitors. City Council and Mayor's Office invite visitors to speak here at Council. Um, those who speak shall not uh, engage in discussion or debate with the City Council, the Mayor or uh, City Manager or any individuals from uh, City staff. Um, if you would like to speak, I will obviously step aside and you are welcome to come up here to the lectern and please uh, state your name and the ward in which you live. Anyone? Seeing none, we will move on to agenda item five, which is items that have been laid on the table. I'll be looking for a motion to remove ordinance number 9-24 from the table. Yes, Councilor Gibson. I move that we remove, <coughs> excuse me, remove the city budget from the table. Thank you. Councilor Gibson moves that ordinance 9-24, our fiscal year 2024-2025 budget be removed from the table. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Parity Cotton Zero. A uh, motion before the council is to remove ordinance 9-24 from the table. Uh, again, this is a non-debatable motion. If you are in favor of the motion, you will please state by saying aye. If you are opposed, please state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it, ayes have it. Ordinance 9-24, fiscal year 2024-2025 budget is removed. All right, before we jump in, I just wanna explain what I've got uh, up here for you all tonight. Um, and for those at home who are watching, just so you have an understanding of what we're doing, um, I felt like it was important to have a way to track the amendments that we are making to this budget. I also think that it's helpful to see like a visual of the amendments and the impact on the budget, including uh, how much it is above or below the tax cap, as well as the tax rate impact. So I've created a spreadsheet, be presenting it throughout the discussions. Anytime that there is a proposed amendment, I will add it to the spreadsheet. So please bear with me as I type it in. Uh, that will then allow us to see, again, all the impacts and um, all that. Once the amendment is passed, I will leave it in. If we do not pass an amendment, uh, I will delete it from the spreadsheet just so folks are aware. Again, felt like it would be helpful to have the visual. Gets everything all in one place, keeps it a little organized. You can see it's broken down by school, city, and revenue sections. Um, and then at the bottom is kind of our overarching tally. Uh, as proposed at the bottom, just for kind of to ground everybody, as proposed was as proposed by the school board and city manager. As amended is obviously the amendments that we have made and how it impacts the budget, all right? And it should just auto-populate with everything. And we always have our handy dandy uh, finance director, Scott Smith, to double check and make sure everything aligns with his numbers as well. Um, but uh, I'll be looking for amendments. I would actually uh, request from the council that we start with amendments related to revenue. Councilor Witham. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to propose an amendment to the revenue side. I'd draw council's attention to page C2 in our budget uh, for reference. Currently, the city manager is proposing using $1.5 million in fund balance to reduce taxes. I would like to move to increase that by uh, an additional 300,000 to 1.8 million. Uh, and if I get a second, I'd be open to uh, explain that further. Right. 
All right. The amendment before us is to adjust the revenue section, the general fund line item on page C2 from 1.5 million to 1.8 million. Let me just add that in. Okay. Motion was made by Councillor Witham, seconded by Councillor Goodwin. Discussion? If I may? Yes, Councillor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I did provide to all councillors at your desk tonight uh, some notes on my thoughts uh, in terms of the budget here tonight, and I've spoken about this before. I think there are uh, or perhaps a handful, maybe a slightly more than that, of areas that this council has discussed over uh, a number of meetings and workshops which uh, we've we've not agreed on but we have them in these these buckets of things to discuss right uh, and those buckets are outlined in my uh, my notes that I provided to all of you one of those buckets is to use additional fund balance to reduce the impact on the tax rate um, uh, this amount of money does not bring us below an override uh, it just softens the tax rate blow. We heard uh, at the last meeting that our fund balance is currently uh, healthy, uh, which allows us to do this. Mind you, that once we move this use of fund balance to $1.8 million, in all likelihood, we are baking that into the budget for next year as well, uh, and potentially for subsequent years unless we get a healthy fund balance and we want to use more but it, it sort of has a, a carrying effect moving forward which is why I think we need to be judicial with our use of fund balance because although we could certainly take more from fund balance to reduce uh, taxes uh, is that lasting can we sustain that practice moving forward and in my humble opinion the answer is no uh, so I think we need to be thoughtful uh, with it and I think this is a thoughtful approach uh, to uh, softening the blow um, the other areas that you see on my notes that we'll have to address individually line by line uh, add some money take some money away uh, and if and I suspect other counselors have other ideas as well but if my slate of changes were to occur tonight along with this additional use of uh, fund balance uh, the tax rate would actually, as projected at the last meeting of $1.53, would actually drop by about four cents uh, to $1.49 or thereabouts. Uh, so again, I think this helps. Uh, it doesn't avoid the override. Um, and I would just remind council that, at least in my time on council, I'm, I'm hard pressed to remember a time uh, that I've been here where our estimated tax rate impact when again using the word estimated is actually set by Department of Revenue Administration in the fall is not significantly less than what our projected estimate is at the time of budget passage so uh, is there a guarantee of that no there are no guarantees in life but there's a pretty damn good track record about that so um, again I feel comfortable with this amendment uh, and the final thing I'll say is that if we get further into our budget discussions tonight and council feels that there's a need to use more fund balance additional amendments can be made there this isn't like one whack at the pinata we can come back to this and entertain the discussion again I, I think we need to be careful there but uh, this isn't one and done tonight if you will thank you thank you just a side note for the spreadsheet for folks that are following along uh, the revenue section is the only section that when you do a from to a change it actually if I left it as um, the 300,000 because it's increasing by 300,000 it would actually appear as if we've added 300,000 I've just made a quick change to the formula so it says minus 300,000 even though we're adding some it's actually taking away because from the tax rate if you will because we are using money we already have and including it in the revenue so just wanted that to be clear it's the only piece of this that probably will have that strange little quirk can I ask for some clarification absolutely yeah yes he's, he's correct the only issue we have is 
when you change the revenue side, the, the budget ordinance is all your expenditure sides. So it doesn't change. So your total budget amount as amended, mm -hmm. d it does not go down by that 300,000. We're still at the 59 million 103. Great point. I wonder if there's a way to change it. But other than that, the tax cap number I would agree with and the tax rate impact at this point I would agree with. Yeah, I think just formula wise, it might be tough to change that, but it does show at, to your understanding that the tax cap amount and rate impact numbers are accurate? Yeah, I don't okay. believe it does. Thank you. All right, other discussion? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. Just a, maybe a question for Scott or um, <clears throat> uh, um, Councilor Witham if he has a insight on it. Uh, I certainly understand that shifting cost into the general fund is something that we need to be mindful of, uh, not only to maintain the balance, but for future budgeting purposes. But I guess I don't fully understand why it's so sticky from year to year. If we can't, would, isn't it up to the manager and the council next year, couldn't we simply choose not to do it? Or is, does the tax cap kind of make it hard to undo? I defer to the city manager or finance director on that, but again, just based upon my understanding, they typically would now look at that as their budget number for next year. Otherwise, you're probably looking at a reduction in some way, but I'm probably not articulating that well. Finance director, Yeah, that's essentially it. So, for example, if this passes and uh, stays it as it is, and this year we use $1.8 million of fund balance to reduce the tax rate. The issue could be next year if there isn't sufficient funds or we're not comfortable using that level, every dollar you reduce your use of fund balance then is less revenue that you have and impacts the tax rate directly. So it's very similar to what we deal with all the time. When you lose revenue, that impacts your ability. Basically, you have to raise more property taxes. So it stresses your tax cap and it stresses your tax rate when you do that, because you lose that revenue. It's a one-time revenue source. Councilor Goodwin, you're still recognized. Thank you. Um, uh, I guess I, I'm, I think I understand that piece, but just from a budget perspective, let's say we're moving the 300,000 300, from uh, tax proceeds to the general fund. That, and let's just make up a, where that's coming from. Let's say that's coming from, I don't know, roads. So we're taking 300,000 off roads, we're putting it towards the general fund. From a budgetary perspective, when the budget next year is made, the council could direct or the manager could take the initiative to just backfill that amount, right? So there's, is, we're not obligated to, to just benchmark to what last year's budget is, are we? That's right, next year the manager could go back to 1.5, or could, or could um, recommend 1.9, uh, and I think, it, Going years back, don't hold me to it, but it seems to me that I, at one point I did increase it, and council approved an increase of some three, three hundred or more thousand dollars. So it's not locked in. Yeah. You're correct. So it can be. It can be. In other words, the um, the use of the general fund is uh, managed by the manager. Or the recommendation made is made by the manager and approved by the council every year. So while Witham is making the point, no, if Councilor Witham is making the point that it tends to be sticky to find other sources if we are mindful there, that is not nece necessarily like we're not stuck right we, we can manage our way out of that in future years thank you other discussion councilor gibson then vincent I, councilor vincent was for us oh councilor vincent go for thank that. you councilor gibson your honor <clears throat> how much is left in fund balance if we take 1.8 million i'll defer to Finance Director Smith. Well, at this moment, it would be about 5.6 million. So we ended the year with 7.4. And what happens, you, you've got to remember with fund balance, that happens when you close your books at the end of every year. So it's not, a, it's not like a daily changing number. It happens once a year. So as we closed the books last year, we had 7.4. So right now you're using 1.8, so you have roughly 5.6. But then we'll close this year's books and generally there is some level of surplus that will then increase it again. Right. Uh, Follow-up question is, so we just talked last week that a good mark is between $6 million and 15 to $16 million to stay within bonding, and now we're dipping below that. No, it's, it's a percentage. It's between 
and uh, 17 percent. OK, I'm range. sorry. I thought I thought that I, I apologize. I was confused with percentage with millions. I thought that's that's yeah, what so you were saying. This, this would leave us right in the middle. This would leave us about a little over nine percent. Um, and that's before we close the book. So thank you. Thanks. Other uh, Councilor Gibson. Um, assuming that we do this with active construction and deferrals on taxes and so forth, when those come onto the books to generate the general fund revenues, will that lessen the impact of taking this out? I'm not sure if I'm stating that clearly. Yeah, I'm not sure if I understand it fully anyways, but okay. as, you, as, as you add new construction, as new property assessments come on board, what that would do is, what that can do is reduce your tax rate. So you don't get, you don't get additional revenue. The, the amount of taxes that you collect are decided by the budget process. So once you complete this and adopt the budget, then once you take all the appropriations you've approved, less all your non-tax revenues, decides how much property tax revenues you need to collect. And then it's just a mathematical formula based on the net assessment. So as you have more development, more that increases your assessment, which will decrease your tax rate. But you collect the same amount of property taxes. Okay. Um, so... Just to use examples, let's say that we have $100 million in assessed value in the town, uh, city, sorry, right now. It increases to $110 million with new construction added to the books. That will reduce the assessment per thousand. Okay. Which budget? going forward, um, the tax rates that the state will give us this fall is for the following budget cycle or this budget cycle? No, the tax rate we get in the fall is for this budget cycle. It's, it's for the budget you're working on right now. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Rhythm? Thank you. Uh, I I do appreciate the the question that the counselor to my right has raised here. <clears throat> and yes, the city manager, through our adoption of the budget, can raise or lower the use of uh, fund balance uh, to impact the tax rate either positively or negatively. Again, the fund balance is, in simplistic terms, and talking to our audience members at home and here, it is indeed like the city's piggy bank uh, that we have, uh, or uh, maybe a better term is the city's uh, savings account that we have at a bank that uh, we can use to offset the tax rate. We are not buying anything with my proposed amendment. We are simply reducing the impact on the tax rate by adding an additional $300,000 in revenue. And to use the term sticky or sustaining long term, if next year we want to go back to 1.5 million, that means that hopefully somewhere in our budget we find another $300,000 in revenue. Otherwise, we got to go scrambling to find that or make $300,000 in cuts to keep everything the same. That has been magnified certainly in recent budget years with the school department, with the lack of revenue from the state. It would be great if it was predictable and sustainable. I think I used those two terms last time. I told you that they were important bellwethers in a budget process for the long term. So I think that's the point that I would make is that if we choose not to use 1.8 million next year and come back, it, it then, it's not impossible, but it, it's, it's more arduous, I guess, is the way I would describe it. The other thing I would comment about the use of fund balance and being careful with it and again, if this all were to uh, pass, uh, we'd be somewhere between 9 and 10 percent 
uh, which is right in the middle of our fund balance policy, those percentages between 5 and 17. Uh, the fund balance is not only there to help us with impacts on the tax rate. And in fact, maybe it's more important use is to be there in the event of an emergency. I don't know what that would be. Uh, several years ago, there was a section of High Street up beyond the, uh, the, the, the drugstores that over the course of that winter basically exploded. We lost the road for whatever reason. It, 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 was, it fell into complete disrepair. It, it cost us just shy of $400,000 to repair a short section of roadway that was not in the budget. What did we do? We went to fund balance uh, to deal with that. And on occasion, we, we might have to do that. If, uh, I don't know, a boiler goes at a school and they request a supplemental appropriation, that would come out of fund balance. If, if there were an uninsured damage to a building, a roof blew off, oh, we might have to use fund balance, that, those sorts of emergencies. So hence why the fund balance policy says that you need to maintain sort of the, this healthy uh, margin. The other thing, and another counselor mentioned it at the last meeting, is that uh, a healthy fund balance also helps us to uh, have better bond ratings uh, when, when, when the time comes to bond projects. So there's a lot of reasons to maintain a healthy fund balance. I think it's healthy enough for us to dip in a bit more. Again, I think 300000 is conservative, um, intolerable, and importantly sustainable. And again, I know I'm beating the same drum, but it's important. You did a good job while I was adjusting, so thank you. <laughs> Other discussion? Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Um, yes, uh, I'll be supporting this amendment. And um, I appreciate this conversation because I was thinking the same way. Why 300,000 and not more? Um, I think there's obviously two ways to add to the plus side of the budget if we're going to increase at all, which we've all already done a little bit on the school side. Um, either the fund balance or another magical revenue source appears or we go over the tax cap and uh, the taxpayer helps us get over the finish line with this budget. Um, I think it's this year going to be either a mix of that or we're gonna have to take even more <laughs> from the fund balance. Um, and being that we do the budget every year, it's gonna be the same, mostly the same council next year. Uh, we're gonna remember this discussion, I'm sure. So if we do end up uh, taking more than 300,000 and still staying within that healthy place for the fund balance, um, you know, we'll have the same discussion next year to see, you know, maybe the, the 300,000 up to 1.8 feels like a healthy place to be at anyway. Um, the budget goes up every year. Um, the fund balance currently and the whole tax cap um, formula currently doesn't include a bunch of things this year, the new net construction. We don't know yet what the tax rate is gonna be. We don't yet know what's gonna happen on the state level with school funding. And so I think it's pretty safe to say that we're gonna to have to increase a little bit going forward, especially if we wanna get into sidewalks and some of those other much more expensive things. Um, so I will say I definitely support at least the 300,000. Once we start getting into some of these other line items, um, we're gonna have to talk about maybe either coming back to this or is there support to go over the tax cut? Thank you, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Ron. So to me, uh, this, and I don't mean any disrespect, this is a smoke show. This is like going to a show and looking at something and saying, wow, we got this, but we really don't. Remember one thing, next year, we're gonna be on the hook for this money that we take out of fund balance. We always are. Here's an example. On the sheet that Council Witham gave out, he wants to do, and I'm not trying to jump ahead, I'm just trying to give an example. He wants to do an additional increase to the roads. To me, that's where fund balance comes into play because it's a one-time thing, a expenditure that you can spend the money on and we're not affected down the road next year for it. Just be careful, people here. You can and take as much as you want. But remember, next year, it's still here. It hasn't gone away. It's not like presto changeo, we're at zero. No, we're on the hook for this. I just want to make sure everybody is really clear on this. 
We are not gaining by any means. Yeah, we're helping the tax stay down a little bit. I get it. But we're still on the hook for it next year. And if anybody disagrees, please explain it to me because I want the education. Thank you. Others looking to discuss. Councillor Parity Um Yeah, thank you, Councillor Vincent. I was thinking along some of those lines as well. And again, not to you know jump around, but I like the example that you used and I think another, I described two ways to raise on the revenue side, obviously take some out of fund balance, go over the tax cap. The other thing that was proposed at the last meeting was sort of creatively taking line items out of this budget and sort of funding them on the side with the general fund budget. Um, that also will take some remembering next year so that we're not like, oh, we have zero dollars for roads. We're going to have to remember to add it back in. I think. Whichever side of the coin it is, we're going to have to remember that. Um, I'm certainly open to um, whatever those creative things might be. Um, but I would say I, I still support this uh, 300000 general fund increase. All right. Other discussion? Councillor Witham? Uh, good one. Thank you. At the fear of adding oil to my smoke show, I uh, just want to uh, be mindful that I was the one that raised at the last meeting the idea of maybe using fund balanced for one-time things, right? And uh, again, not to look ahead too far, but in my uh, proposed notes that you have in front of you, I show a decrease to capital outlay of 25000 to remove the money for the master plan. I sort of view that as a one-time cost. It comes up once every 10 years. That's a one-time cost. Um, I get how one could perceive roads as a one-time cost, but we spend... 900,000, a million, a million one every year on road. So I view that as a budget item that we need to sustain versus uh, something like Constitutional Way, a complete tree. That, that's like a one time thing, right? So uh, I contemplated removing uh, the money for uh, fleet stuff, right? I think there's a police car, undercover vehicle, uh, pickup truck for code, or something of that nature. Uh, the trouble is you'd have to buy all of those right out of the gate, so you're going to be well over $100,000 versus a $20,000 lease payment. And there's really not a one-time thing as I thought about it, right? We buy fleet vehicles every year to keep the fleet sustained. Well, there's that word again, right? So just a few points there about the thought process behind this. Thank you. Councillor Goodwin? <clears throat> I guess I'd clarify, uh, I think this, I understand this correctly, but the motion is to, it, the 300,000 is not currently, it's just, it's it's taking money out of the savings account, but we haven't said what we're spending it on yet. It's just going in the pot, in the pot, and it's being split amongst all of the other line items, right? So, um, so we... Could, it could be, you know, it's fun money. It's fungible, right? The three hundred thousand could be roads. It could be the master plan. It could be a bunch of a bunch of different things. So, um, again, I, I support the three hundred thousand, and we can debate on the next step of this conversation what is it's going to be spent on. Thank you. Other discussion. Councilor Pepin. I'd just like to comment a little bit about the roads. Um, several years ago, our roads were a mess in the city. Um, we hired a private company to come in and do a survey of all our roads in the city of Somersworth, and we used them to actually uh, give us information of what it's going to cost to keep our roads up and keep them maintained to a, to a normal standard. Uh, everybody said that Councilman Sprague came up with that figure. That figure came up from this company. For those who were on the on the uh, traffic uh, on the public works committee, uh, actually went through it. This thing, the reason why we said a million dollars, and that was set probably back 10 years ago, if not, probably longer than that, probably. I don't know, some in that area. Um, the amount of money that you got for roads back then to have resurfaced and the money, amount of roads that you have resurfaced today is a lot different. Um, petroleum has gone up, the cost of pavement's gone up, cost of labor has gone up. So just keep in mind that what you want to cut out of that, if you take that out of the budget this year or next year or whatever, your roads are going to deteriorate a little bit more faster. What we were trying to do is keep a, keep a maintenance up that 
we're not going to be have to shell out and end up have to float a bond later on of two or three million dollars to do a bunch of roads simply because we haven't kept up with the budget during during the previous during the previous budgets. As far as road maintenance, I strongly believe that we should keep that in the budget, keep it as a fixed cost item that basically is in the budget for, for years to come. And if if nothing else, we may need to increase that in the near future simply because of the cost of everything else that's going up and, and what we're getting for the amount of product being put down on the road. So I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, I, I really strongly don't recommend cutting any anything off on the, in road resurfacing. Thank you. Other discussion? Could I re request a roll call vote? Absolutely. So again, the motion before the council is to amend ordinance 9-24 to uh, adjust the fund balance from 1.5 million to 1.8 <coughs> million. Um, if you are in favor of the amendment, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Is a roll call vote? Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. Yes. All right. The amendment has been adopted. All right. Real quick before we jump to new amendments, I just want to do a quick change to the spreadsheet now that I have a second. Bear with me. <coughs> Uh, didn't do it again. Oh, no, it did. Never mind. My apologies. All right. So now it should reflect the total budget amount correctly, hopefully. All right. Looking for other amendments. Councilor Witham. Yeah, might as well stick with uh, what Councilor Pepin just brought up. Let's uh, deal with the elephant in the room, street maintenance. Uh, draw your attention to page C69. Uh, the city manager, because of tax cap implications in the budget, uh, he provided all of us with a memo prior to the last council meeting with adjustments he made to his proposed budget that he would not have otherwise made if, uh, if not for the tax cap. Uh, one of those was, in fact, street maintenance. Uh, that was reduced by $150,000. So on page C69, line 49104, road resurfacing, I propose an increase of $150,000, bringing it back to the uh, budget level of the current budget year of $900,000. That was a motion, though it came out sort of <laughs> squirrely. Did you need a second? He, he looking for a second. Yeah. Second. All right. Motion before the council is to amend road resurfacing from seven hundred fifty thousand to nine hundred thousand, made by Councillor Witham, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Uh, looking for a discussion, Councillor Witham. Yeah, I think we've sort of beat this one. Up pretty well. I just want to use an example. Uh, timing's everything in life. So today, GMI Asphalt began our current construction season road resurfacing uh, with uh, great progress. They milled and overlaid uh, that section of West High Street from High Street to Cemetery Road all in one day. That was pretty remarkable. So um, if you think about our current year's road resurfacing budget, uh, at $900,000, that short section of West High Street ate up about 300, 350,000 of that road resurfacing budget. Uh, it was a it was a big piece of it. Uh, we're doing some side streets, uh, pleasant uh, silver in in that area uh, in the coming days. The rest of the money we're looking to use to fix the sidewalk. So road resurfacing is fixing sidewalks, right? Because it kind of all blends together along High Street. Uh, we may have to have a supplemental appropriation for that section of sidewalk between West High and South Street. Uh, 
the other side of High Street that we did. That little section of sidewalks looking to cost us a million bucks, right, to fix, and maybe millions low, right? Um, we know that, at least in committee, we've talked about how uh, we won't be able to pave that section of High Street this year, but maybe next year. Um, so that's going to be several hundreds of thousands of dollars just to do that section of High Street. And I'd invite any counselor, member of the public, to drive out on Willand Drive where the new sports dome is under construction. Uh, I'd argue Willand Drive is uh, probably the worst road that we have in the city right now that uh, is going to see marked increase in traffic with the sports dome. Uh, it's going to be bringing in people from all over the region. This is the New England sports dome. And our best foot forward is going to be that road out there. Uh, not on my watch, right? We got to do better. Uh, but if you think about High Street and that road alone next year, I bet you that's a million bucks just to do those two roads. Uh, so uh, I can appreciate that we want to be mindful of spending, uh, but we've worked hard collectively as a council to improve our road resurfacing uh, to a stage where I would agree with Council of Vincent, where our roads have gotten much better, but other roads continue to fall in disrepair, such as the ones that I noted. So uh, it isn't easy to suggest increases. I get it. There's an impact to those, but I think there's an expectation of uh, the public. And Dave Witham's two cents. Uh, when you raise taxes for salaries and benefits, people squirm over that. When you raise taxes to pave a road, they sort of accept it. Uh, it's their money at work. They can see their money at work, and somehow it's, it passes the test better, right? Um, so there you go. Thank you. Mr. Others Mayor. wishing to discuss? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Uh, slight correction. It was Councilor Pepin that brought up about this, the road program. Thank you. Um, and not actually an issue this year, but if you're talking about Willen Road and the amount of increased traffic it's going to see, I would suggest that you do a complete rebuild on that rather than just resurfacing it because it's going to get beat. Just a comment. Thank you. Other discussion on the amendment? All right, seeing none, again, the motion before the council is to amend Ordinance 9-24 to increase road resurfacing from 750,000 to 900,000. Um, if you're in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Yes. 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 Right, amendment has been adopted. Um, I'm going to do roll call votes for all amendments moving forward if, without objection also. Just wanted to make that clear. Um, looking for other amendments. Council Rhythm. I bring the council's attention to page C94. Uh, this is under capital outlay. Budget line 49162. The master plan. I propose a dec decrease there of twenty-five thousand dollars, which will zero out that line. Uh, as I shared earlier, I view the master plan. I, I'll wait for a second before I discuss it. Sorry, apologies. Second. All right. So we have a motion to. Adjust the master plan uh, from twenty-five thousand dollars to zero, uh, made by Councilor Witham, seconded by Councilor Parity Cotton Zero. Um, again, uh, we'll have a little bit of a discussion. Councilor Witham, would you like to discuss your amendment? Yeah, quite simply, uh, I do view this as a one-time cost. It kind of falls in that bucket. Uh, I think we also heard from the city manager, and I invite him to jump in for clarity that this does is not even enough money to really do it in full. So I think we need to have a, a more cohesive look at this. And if the council embraces the idea of updating our master plan, uh, that we then use uh, some monies in fund balance, perhaps grant monies or some combination thereof uh, to fund it uh, in a more meaningful way. Thank you. 
other discussion? Yes, Councillor Gibson. Okay, so just to clarify, we are not doing away with that. You're just looking to transfer it out of the general fund budget, pull it from fund it, balance. For, for now, we are doing away with it. It would require additional council action through a supplemental appropriation through some other funding source, fund balance being the, the most likely uh, to, to fund it. So uh, I guess it's gone for now if this were to pass pending further council action at another time. You're still recognized, Councilor Gibson. Okay, and if we remove this and it has to go to um, being pulled from fund balance after discussion of how much is actually needed, does that require a two-thirds vote? Any supplemental appropriation requires a two-thirds vote. I just vote. wanted to be sure. So the issue is that we could end up with nothing for that. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? Councillor Goodwin. I appreciate uh, what Councillor Witham is trying to achieve here. I guess I'm a little nervous, uh, which I think your Councillor Gibson might be as well, that um, there's no guarantee that this funding will be appropriated after this budget has been approved because that requires a two-thirds vote. Um, and, you know, it actually cuts both ways. It either could not be funded, uh, so zero money goes towards the master plan, or um, this was, I believe, we, uh, the 25,000 years representative of a chapter-by-chapter -chapter update approach um, because they, a complete master plan update would be in the order of 90 to 100,000 plus dollars. Uh, which was not supported by the budget. This is from memory of prior conversations. Um, so I, I doubt even more that uh, a full appropriation would be granted this year. And I do feel strongly that our master plan is in need of updating. And given that we don't likely have the appetite to fund the entire thing this year, I would feel more comfortable knowing that at least one chapter, additional chapters moving forward, Obviously, there's potential outside revenue sources with grants, but that is uncertain. And to me, this is small enough dollars where I would prefer to keep it in the budget. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Perry Catanzaro and then Gibson. Um, yeah, mostly a question, I think, for Scott. Um, can you remind me, there was some circumstance under which if we pulled something out of this budget, is it correct that this would need to be taken up after June um, so that we would be in that budget cycle? Otherwise, it does something weird to the fund balance? No. If, if you pulled this out and the council decided they wanted to do a supplemental appropriation, you can do that at any time. So then it would just be a determination. Like if you did it tonight, it would come out, it would be applied to this year's budget. Um, so it, usually when we get close to the end of the year, you can make a determination on which budget year it's going to be in. Um, but that's really up to the council, and you can do it any time you'd like. Okay. Um, I think my intent in uh, supporting this was to definitely at least raise the issue again. Um, I wouldn't want to see it go away entirely. Um, so I'd be curious to hear from other counselors, I guess, what, what the appetite is to fund this this year, if if it's more likely to be supported leaving it at 25, or if others would be in support of funding it fully at a conversation after tonight. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. Um, is there any statutory requirement on time frame for the master plan? City Manager? There's no um, penalty, if you will, but we're supposed to update it every so often. We are updating two chapters through grant proceeds this year. We're in the middle of doing that now. And my proposal, um, uh, Councilor Goodwin was correct. Uh, our initial uh, estimate was around $90,000, so I ratcheted back to 25000 for four consecutive years to do a chapter a year. You're still recognized, you. Councilor Gibson. So, my only concern would be that, number one, if it ends up getting put off, 
everything goes up, costs of doing that. So if there are no outside funds available, um, you're going to be looking at an increased cost for doing it if it does not get approved as a supplemental appropriation. And I don't know what the appetite of the council is for this, but we theoretically are going to have a new member, I hope, <laughs> uh, joining us, and we have no idea what their um, appetite is. For um, doing a supplemental appropriation. I only bring that up as a concern because you do have to have the two thirds. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes I struggle a little bit with master plans, especially when we get two, possibly two big developers coming in with probably a lot more apartments, a lot more people. Sometimes I wonder if we're better off to hold off a little bit of the master plan and see how that affects our community a little bit so we can plan around the hopefully increase of population that's coming into our community with, with new apartments. Hopefully we bring in new businesses or whatever. They have a little bit better of a, of a thing. When you make the master plan, it's there for a while. So I, I guess my consideration, that's what my thoughts are, is that you know when you start thinking about it, there are going to be some major changes in Somersworth, at least in two developers in, in the downtown area. Um, it's just something just I just wanted to throw out for thought. So if anybody else is going to any comments. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Witham and then Goodwin. Thank you. <clears throat> I think all of the points made by all of my fellow councilors are, are good, right? There, there are pros and cons to all of these budget decisions, right? Uh, and I think we all understand that and, and get that. Sort of on the theme that Councillor Pepin raises here, though, we, we have several large, large projects uh, in the wings and in motion right now. Our planning office is staffed very thinly. Uh, the manager just articulated we're working on a couple of chapters now through grant monies. And not that they couldn't do it, but at some point, there's a, a bandwidth discussion as well with staff that there's only so many hours in the day and so much time that they can, and I know that we bring in consultants for this, but there's still staff time there. So, you know, not only does it help us a bit, not a lot, right? 25 grand isn't a lot. It helps us a bit on the, the budget side, uh, but it, it's not like the master plan update process is stalled. We're working on a couple of chapters. Councillor Pepin brings up a good point. Maybe there's more to be gained. Uh, maybe it would be better if it was done now, right? But it's not. Uh, and we have staff bandwidth as well that we need to be mindful of. So, uh, again, if this passes, great. Uh, I propose the amendment. If it doesn't pass, uh, I'm not losing sleep over it. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Goodwin? Thank you. Um, I guess my perspective on... Uh, Councillor uh, Pepin's point is I actually feel that the large development is indicative of our need to update the master plan more because the economic position of Somersworth has changed. Um, for a long, long time, we were largely begging for development and uh, we are, you know, trying to be pro-business. Um, and we certainly welcome that development, but it's starting to come to us without us begging because the, re the region has changed. And the last time the master plan was updated in 2010, a process that probably was at least a year long, so we're looking at uh, 2009, 2008, the world was a very different place then. Um, and our, our master plan has many good things in it, but it is outdated. And I think it's important for uh, our community to know that we are being proactive in guiding growth for where Somersworth is today, where the economy is today. Um, I think the lack, uh, you know, the risk of not updating the master plan is that m more development happens and then we go, oh crap, that wasn't in the best interest of our town and we don't know until it's done. Um, and I certainly don't want to, you know, hamper uh, the opportunity of our town. I don't think that's the point of the master planning process, but I do want to empower 
um, uh, our community to be proactive in shaping our future, and that requires, uh, you know, being mindful about updating the master plan, and I think it's an investment worth making. Um, and it, the risk of not updating it is potentially alienating uh, the community um, by things happening that they don't feel like uh, reflect our community anymore, or um, having things built that are going to be in our community for decades that uh, we might not want here for decades. So, um, for me, it's 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 important to keep picking away at this. Um, and uh, ordinarily, I think I would vote in favor of it, but I just don't believe we have the votes to get a supplemental appropriation later. Um, so I'm a no on this. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Um, just adding to the conversation um, how long overdue we are for a master plan update. We've been talking about it for several years now, and the last one uh, was in 2010. It was intended to be a 10 year master plan. It's now 2024. It would be 2025 or 2026. So we have a 10 year master plan that we're pulling into the 15th or 16th year. Um, so I think I will not be supporting this amendment as well. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Yes, Councillor Vincent and then Gibson. Thank you, Your Honor. So I'm willing to go ahead and uh, vote on this, but I would urge um, if it's the staff, us council here, to make moves to update, obviously, our master plan somehow, some way. Um, you know, it's like money gone here, money coming in here. I like the positive money that comes in and not the money that we have to use. And I've already said it tonight. The money that we have to use that we're going to be on the hook for next year. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. I would agree with the previous sorry, comments made about the need to do it. I would tend to be in favor of keeping it in the budget only to ensure that it gets addressed. Um, like I said before, composition of the council is going to change and not knowing the preferences of the individual councilors now, I just want that to be known as my position on it. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, if you're in favor of the amendment, you'll say by saying yes. If you are opposed, you'll say by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. No. No. Kevin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? No. Harry Catanzaro? No. No. All right. The amendment fails. Let me just adjust. Not every whack at the pinata does candy come out. <laughs> All right, I'll be looking for other amendments tonight. Councilor Witham. Was can we have a what was the count on that vote, by the way, for the oh yeah. Got it. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go to uh, page C eight uh, community support. And I'll start, which is on my notes, the top bucket, if you will. And I'm going to go to the third item in that top bucket, uh, Summersworth Youth Connection. My motion is to propose a decrease of $50,000. I that. second that motion. Let me just quickly grab the number. One sec. All right, the motion before us is to amend uh, the SYC section under community support from 50,000 to zero. Uh, motion made by Councillor Witham, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Discussion, Councillor Witham. I'll be brief. Uh, although over the years, I think many of us have recognized the, the, the value of um, after school programming and before school programming and the services that were provided by 
uh, SYC. For a number of years, this was funded largely on the backbone of grants. Uh, and then a few years ago, the city and school department sort of cooperatively uh, decided to uh, take it in-house, which I think conceptually made sense, right? Because if you think about grants, they are largely designed to be seed monies to get programs up and running, but then you take ownership of them. Uh, unfortunately, the way the grant ran with Youth Connection, it, 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 it didn't really tail off. It was like, well, will you get it again, right? So it was always this trepidation, this unease that went along with the grant, which I think is why it was decided to bring it in-house. Uh, unlike grants that we've gotten for new police officers or new firefighters, typically those are phased in over most typically three years. Year one is 100%, year two is like 85%, year three is 50%, and then year four, you, you own it all. So it kind of fades off, some math like that. When we brought it in-house, in-house being the city collectively, there were three funding buckets for this. There was the city, the 50,000 that I'm proposing elimination of here. There was money in the school department budget. And then there are, uh, I'll call them user fees, right? M monies that are paid for uh, by the parents of the children that are involved in the program. And although it didn't occur to me at the time, since then it's been sort of and it made sense to me. Why is it funded out of so many different buckets, right? Um, I think it belongs in one bucket, and that is the school department budget. It is, it is uh, a, a program that perhaps best belongs there, understanding the budget struggles that they have. Uh, however, we've heard through discussion uh, at the school board through their budget deliberations that there may well be alternatives uh, outside of SYC to deliver, I won't call them identical services, but similar services and maybe that's doing a disservice to the discussion but that's how i'll phrase it here um, i don't know what the appetite for this is here but i'll start and i know we got a second so th those are my comments anyways thank you other discussion councillor parity catanzaro yeah um I, th I think i see where this comes from and it makes sense to me with a with an asterisk um i was just looking back at the <clears throat> the school budget and Currently, we have five hundred thousand um, dollars back in, so that's you know roughly the tier three. Currently, we do not have SYC funded yet. We haven't um, added enough to the school budget, and so it makes sense to me that if we're not funding it there, we don't fund it here. But you know, we haven't had that conversation yet. And the number one thing that I have heard from the community is about SYC. So I'd love to, um, I don't know if we need a rule suspension, but I would love to just ask for a status update from uh, the school side um, on if this money is eliminated, if SYC funding is cut, um, there's considering of an after school alternative, but are we sure that there will be something there? Without objection from the council, I'll allow um, the school department to come speak. School department. Good evening. So Katie and I have been uh, meeting with a couple different providers. One is the YMCA. That's called the Granite YMCA, and they operate before and after school programming throughout the state of New Hampshire. And the second um, group that we've been talking to is the Rochester Child Center, and they offer uh, right currently um, before and after school programming for um, six elementary schools. They're going to be going online with the middle school next year, and Rochester is also building another elementary school, so they're looking at doing that as well. Um, one of the things that we don't offer right now as a school district is um, uh, we're not a licensed child care center, and so. Uh, we don't offer uh, scholarships, which the YMCA can do, and also the Rochester Child uh, Center can do as well. So, if this isn't funded, we're we're looking at plans to bring one of those two entities in at this particular point. Um, so, actually, the YMCA is going to come in and speak at the next scheduled school board meeting, which is uh, April 30th. So, all right. So, are you fairly confident that there will be a at least one alternative, if not two, to choose from? I think so, yeah. 
I, I, I believe we could put something in place for the start of next school year. Thank yep. you. Other questions, Councilor Vincent? Yeah, thank you, and thanks for taking my question. Um, so when you say the Rochester program, they're, they're actually coming to our location. We're not, we're not busing them over Correct. there. Right, right. Okay. Would, we would use our facilities. Okay. Uh, we would um, hire folks that are already in the program. We don't want to have them lose jobs. Right. Uh, and um, I think the, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, I believe the Y, isn't the Y offering uh, something at one of the preschool programs in town? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, they're off, I think, um, three to six ages. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Seeing none, thank All you right, so thank much. You. All right. Other discussion about this amendment? All right. Seeing none, again, <laughs> amendment before us is to adjust the SYC line item under community support from 50000 to zero. If you're in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Yes. Cameron? Yes. Tappan? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Charity Cotton Zero? <laughs> No. Yes. Okay, the amendment is adopted. Other amendments tonight? Councilor Witham. Certainly, if other councilors have them, I would certainly yield, but just kind of going over my notes. Uh, same section of the budget. We're on page C8 under community support. Draw council's attention to budget line 45472 which is the coast bus service. Uh, my motion to is, increased, is to increase the uh, request of coast bus service by $10,000, which would bring it to 106,995. All right, motion before us is to amend Coast Bus from 96,995 to 106,995. Motion made by Councillor Witham, seconded by Councillor Parity Cat and Zero. Discussion. Councillor Witham. Yeah, this doesn't uh, really even move the needle a lot towards their ask. Uh, however, uh, we heard from uh, the director of Coast Bus during our Saturday morning budget workshop where we had all community support organizations here that ridership in Summersworth remains very strong. We know that we have a uh, high ridership with ADA accessibility needs which comes at significant added cost for the service. Uh, he recognizes the budget struggles that communities are in and if I heard him correctly he said if we could move the needle even a little, that would be appreciated. So I heard that loud and clear, um, moving the needle a little with this based upon service demands and cost. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Parity Captain Zero. Yeah, um, I appreciate moving the needle a little. Certainly will support that. Um, I don't think it's enough, <laughs> so I'll probably be proposing more later on if there's um, an opportunity to do so. Um, the difference is $80,783, just coming halfway up would be $40,000. Um, so I will at least be supporting this amendment. Thanks. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Pepin. Yeah, I served on that board also at one time, and uh, this also ends up increasing their federal funding because their federal funding is, is off of what the community developed communities given to the coast boss so this does help a little bit on both ends so uh, thank you for that thanks amendment other discussion Councilor Witham yeah just I'll use the opportunity now uh, with the comments made by Councilor Parity Cat and Zero about the increase I get it it's just a little right as I approached some of my proposed amendments to the budget there were a couple of things that I was uh, looking at part of it is a simple X's and O's discussion right if we do this it has this impact on the tax rate right 
Uh, if we do this, it does this to the tax rate. Part of it is sort of uh, uh, a very pragmatic approach about service needs. We have a lot of ridership in Summersworth, ADA needs, there, there, there's that, right? The, how much it costs to pave roads and that cost is going up, right? Those, those are those pragmatic pieces. But then there's the piece to the budget that I don't know what to call it. I'll call it the art of the budget, which is trying to figure out what this group collectively has an appetite for, uh, which is why I kind of started off with turning the volume knob just a little bit, right? Uh, if I keep turning it, eventually my wife's going to yell at me to turn it down, right? So I'm just turning it a little, see what the tolerance is, right? So it's kind of the same view, right? Oh, your wife <laughs> that, that, you, you are my wife in this scenario, all of you, yes. Uh, so, uh, yes, yes, a thousand times. <laughs> I never thought we would have levity during a budget discussion, but I there am, you have it. I am an ordained minister, so. <laughs> All right, thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion to amend um, the coast bus section of the community support uh, from 96,995 to 106,995, you'll say by saying yes. If you are opposed, you'll say by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? A thousand times, yes. <laughs> yes. Cameron? Yes. Cameron? Yes. 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 All right. Amendment is approved. All right. Councilor Goodwin, do you have an amendment before us tonight? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. A clarification on process. Is it possible to amend more than one item with a motion? Uh, yeah. I, yes. Uh, please just be patient with me while I write it into oh, the tracker, but I think that that's more than uh, within reason. So, following uh, Council Witham's uh, line here, uh, I would like to make a motion uh, relating to the community support, so page C8, uh, and there are three separate line items on this page that I would like to amend. Right, so uh, the, just start one at a time, please. Yes. So, uh, community food pantry, which is line 45474, increased by $500, and this would matched the amount they requested. Um, obviously a critical, I'll, I'll provide commentary later. Um, the other, yep. it's a terrible typing position. <laughs> you said by $500? Yes, please. All right, next one. Next one is under the new requests for the fiscal year 2025. So uh, Pope Memorial Humane Society, they requested $2,000 and I would like to add $2,000 to meet that request. Okay. And the third item is also in the new request for fiscal 2025 and it's the Falls Chamber of Commerce. They requested $3,000 and I'm suggesting we provide 2000 towards that request. Thank you. So, motion before us is to add three uh, amendments um, as a slate. First being community food pantry from $2,500 to $3,000. Second being uh, Pope Memorial Humane Society from zero to 2,000. And the third being the Falls Chamber from zero to 2,000. Is there a second? Uh, seconded by Councillor Parity Catanzaro. All right, discussion. Councillor Goodwin. Just to give some of my rationale here, um, uh, food pantry I, I hope is self-explanatory of critical um, service and need and very small um, dollar delta there and I think it's just good, um, good faith to contribute that uh, to meet their request given the, the great need and services they provide. Um, Port Memorial Humane Society, I was actually surprised to find was not um, someone that we had given to uh, in the previous year. Um, and their representative uh, during prior budget discussions um, brought to light that they provide a critical service in town and work with our uh, law enforcement to um, do animal control. So they're providing not only a, a community service uh, to um, animals in the region at large, but to our city specifically and that seems of value. Um, 
And then the fall Chamber of Commerce uh, is similar in that uh, they, you know, we do not have a dedicated economic development person on staff. Um, and, uh, you know, for uh, $2,000, I feel like it's a, a good contribution to um, encourage uh, economic development uh, in our community. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Parity Cat and Zero. Yeah, um, I was going to bring up the falls for its own vote, but for the sake of brevity and compromise, I'm on board with this amendment, which at least partially funds them. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, again, the motion before us is to increase under community support the community food pantry from 2,500 to 3,000, increase Pope Memorial Humane Society from zero to 2,000, increase Falls Chamber from zero to 2,000. If you are in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Goodwin. Yes. Cameron? No. 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 Yes. No. Yes. All right. The amendment fails. So bear with me, please, while I delete. Before you erase all that. Sure. Yeah, please. <laughs> Go back. I have undo uh, you do the undo. Uh, I'd like to yeah. make a proposed amendment if I could. Absolutely. Um, it's the same amendment that Councillor Goodwin offered, uh, save for the Falls Chamber of Commerce. So it's an increase of $500 to the Community Food Pantry to meet their ask and $2,000 to the Pope Memorial Second Society, Humane Society. All right, we have an amendment to increase the community food pantry from 2,500 to 3,000 and Pope Memorial from zero to 2,000, is that right? Uh, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Uh, discussion? Councillor Pepin? I really hate food pantries. There's some of them that I like their food to it. I don't like them in the food. That's the reason why I'm, I'm denying that I I would love to take them. It is what it is. You want to vote? I'll vote no on this one. Oh, okay. Other discussion? Councilor Vincent. I have a question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Are we allowed to put an amendment on an amendment? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let's not make this more complicated. Than no, I just meant to deleting another line, that's all. Uh, no, you have to wait okay. until Thank this you. amendment either passes or fails. Thank you, though. Yes, we are. Go ahead, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Yeah, I think Councillor Goodman made an excellent point with regard to the community food pantry. It's meeting their ask, which is de minimis. Uh, they do such good work. It, it takes stresses off our community. Uh, they're very mindful of how they handle a very meager budget allocation. With regard to the Pope Memorial Humane Society, we know that uh, it's utilized by our police department. Uh, we, we leverage that for... Um, animal control type activities. Uh, we don't have an animal control officer and ACO here in the city. So uh, the, the services they help to provide there, this is a, a slight offset to that impact. So, uh, which is why I support it. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor Gibson. Um, I just want to agree with what Councillor Woodham said. I've used them under their previous name called Chico Valley for years to obtain my pets and excellent people, excellent work. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, if you're in favor of increasing the community food pantry under community support from 2,500 to 3,000, as well as increasing Pope Memorial Humane Society from zero to 2,000, you will state by saying yes if you are not. You'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. 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 No. Yes. 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 All right. Amendment is adopted. All right. Other amendments tonight? Councilor Perdicon Zero and Vincent Lovinix. Um, 
Yes, I'd like to propose that we uh, fund the Falls Chamber of Commerce at 1,500. Do I hear a second? Second. This just to slow you guys all down. Oh no, it's the other way around. No, it is that. Jesus. Sorry, I had it in my brain. Um, all right, so <laughs> amendment before us is to increase the Falls Chamber from zero to 1500. Uh, motion made by Councillor Perry Canzaro, seconded by Councillor Goodwin. Discussion? Councillor Gibson? Um, does anybody know? if they are receiving any funding from any of the other communities involved no. i believe when they came to us they said that they do receive funding from yes. some other communities i think dover rochester. dover rochester thank you yeah they, oh, they, Not, yeah dover and rollins for yeah, yeah, right. they said three they said three said three, three communities thank you and do we know how much that might amount to? No, I was gonna say, just kidding. I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't either. I wonder if we have our packets from them. It may be included, but yeah. I don't remember seeing it in there. Okay. Um, to follow up on my questions, first off, it's supposed to be uh, a business organization, okay? Um, funded by activities and dues from the members of the group. Second thing is, I'm in a somewhat of a show me situation as far as I'd like to see them in action as far as producing some results of some kind because one of my biggest complaints when we were members of it was they were on the sidelines for anything of import to the community that was going on. And I just feel that they have previously been very ineffectual in accomplishing anything for this community. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Perry Captain Zero. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, you know, obviously lowered the ask to fund them at half, 1,500 de minimis, you might say. Um, it's pretty unusual for a city or town to not fund its chamber of commerce. Um, it's usually at a much higher rate than this, but I feel like um, you got to start somewhere. Um, you know, we're frequently invited to activities in the chamber. I've attended a few, um, and I, I just remember hearing their presentation here to us and talking about all the um, festivals and things they have planned for uh, this year. I know it's a ton of work, and I know it's also been through a lot of different um, people that have worked there and run it, so um, that is why I've proposed this, this amendment. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Cameron. Have we funded them before in the past? City manager? No, we have not. Thank you. Other questions or discussion? Okay. Seeing none, a uh, motion before us is to increase under community support Falls Chamber from zero to 1500. If you're in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Cameron? No. Catherine? No. Vincent? No. Gibson? No. All right, the amendment is not approved. Anyone want to make another amendment for the falls before I delete it? <laughs> All right, other amendments tonight. Councillor Vincent, I did say it was next. Go ahead. Thank you, Ron. I'll draw your attention to C8. Uh, the line or the account number is going to be 45496. Uh, it's going to be Lions Club. The proposed uh, 
the request is five thousand. The proposal is twenty five hundred. I want to talk a little bit about this. First of all, you know, this when you when you're in this position, you know, wait till the discussion phase, please. I'm just, sorry. Can you wait till yeah, the discussion? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So what is the amount you'd like to amend? Uh, to zero. Second. Thank you. For, thank you for keeping me in line. All right, so we have an amendment to change uh, under Community Support Lions Club from 2,500 to zero, made by Councillor Vincent, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Discussion, Councillor Vincent. Thank you. It's minuscule, really. It is. It's it's really not much, but then again, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred for uh, the chamber is also. However, I've uh, been involved with the Lions Club for several years. My father was a Lions Club member, and the. Uh, like I was going to say, in this position, you know, you're a winner or you're a loser. You know, you're for the Lions Club and like, yes, and then you want to cut it. You're like, ah, oh. you know, so it's kind of like this position that we're in tonight is a is a win-lose situation, depending on, I guess, what side you're on. Um, but I'm really surprised that, and I know Pete, and I don't want to name nobody out, uh, you know, I'm really surprised they came forward because the Lions Club is well off. I mean, they're really well off. I know they do things with the community and stuff, but they get compensated from it. When they have their fishing derbies, they make money on it. Uh, they're very well off. If they weren't, if they weren't, I would not do this, you know. Um, and if I'm wrong, my company will give $2,500, and I mean this because I'm a man of my word, to the, to the Lions Club, but I'm not wrong. And I, I'm telling you, they are very, very well off. Upwards over twenty five, and I've heard closer to $50,000 in their kitty for a nonprofit organization. So with that being said, I'm urging you to just uh, cut this out. Um, we want to help people, but where they're so well off... <sighs> I, like I said, I'm so surprised. I'm so surprised that they haven't even asked. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gibson. Um, I'll be honest. I seconded the motion just because I wanted to hear what Councilor Vincent had to say for in reference to the motion. Um, but I was totally unaware of their financial status until he brought it up. So. I will support his motion. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Witham. Perhaps we have some inside knowledge about the finances of the Lions Club. One of the things that we have not traditionally done with any of our community support, and maybe we should, but we haven't, is any type of means testing, right? Uh, how good your, uh, how much money do you have now? How much will this help? Where does the money go? Does it go to salaries? Does it go to services? We, we have never done that because by and large, this is not a big part of our budget uh, at the end of the day. Uh, the big items in community support, we've already addressed, right? Most of these are less than $2,000, right? Or less than three. They're small. They, they have virtually no impact on the tax rate. And just because I don't want to go down that road, calling one out, not another, over their means, uh, I will not support this. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Goodwin. I guess I'd just add to that. Uh, these, uh, with the exception of <clears throat> two of the line items here, these are all what I would call de minimis amounts of money and that they are largely a vote of confidence in the organization to show that we support them and we believe in their mission. And given that, I will not support this. <clears throat> Councilor Vincent. Thank you. So if these are de minimis, de minimis amounts of money, then why don't why aren't we just passing them all? That's what I want to understand. Okay. Councilor Goodwin. I would happily make that motion. <laughs> Let's hold off on that until we get through this amendment. <laughs> Other discussion? Okay, uh, again, motion before us is to reduce Lions Club under community support from 2,500 to zero. If you're in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. 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 No. 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 Goodwin? No. Cameron? 
No. No. Wait, the amendment fails. Other amendments? Yes, Councilor Witham. I have one final amendment on the city side of the budget. Mm -hmm. Draw Council's attention to page C46. That is police patrol. Uh, Several lines down, uh, line 40220, part-time salaries. Actually, just a few lines down. Uh, recommending increasing part-time salaries from 19438 to 38876 Basically doubling that line, which would increase funding for a part-time police officer from six months to 12 months. There's a second. I'll speak to some of the details. Correct. Second. Seconded by Councillor Gibson. All right, so motion made by Councillor Witham to increase the part-time salaries under the police patrol section of the budget from 19,438 to 38,876. Um, discussion, Councillor Witham. Thank you. Again, I draw Council's attention to the uh, memo circulated by the city manager just prior to our last meeting that talked about some of the budget reductions made um, to uh, develop a city budget within the tax cap as required by city charter this was one of them um, we all know and another item that was articulated in the city manager's memo is that even though we have x number of officers uh, authorized sworn police officers authorized he has chosen not to fund at the level necessary to maintain all of those officers quite simply out of a pragmatic reason in that we've not been able to maintain a full roster of officers so it's been sort of a roll of the dice that, and it's a roll of the dice that the city manager is making here that if track record holds true we will not be able to maintain a full roster of officers hence we don't need all of that full-time salary line so that was reduced what we do know though is that oftentimes we have officers that retire that are very skilled that are already trained that are already certified that we don't have to send to the police academy uh, that know our streets that know our community that can uh, help us to reduce the workload on the officers that remain on the full-time side um, we had an officer, Mike Dumont, that did this for a number of years, and I would liken this to be a similar model. So uh, I appreciate the city manager's reservation in trying to maintain uh, the budget within the tax cap, but I think this is one area that uh, serves the community uh, and the police department well, uh, hence my amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Seeing none. If you're in favor of the amendment to adjust part-time salaries under police patrol from 19,438 to 38,876, you will state by saying yes. You have a quick. May I make one may. last quick comment? Yep. yep. I, I also recognize, and, and the city manager or finance director can jump in. There might be some de minimis uh, benefits lines that are impacted by this as well, workers' comp, but I, I think they're so slight where we're not talking any health care benefits and those sorts of things, that those can probably be absorbed within the city budget, which is why it's just simply an amendment to that salary line. Yeah, I'm seeing nodding from the city manager. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll open it up to discussion again before we go to the actual vote. Yes, Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Um, yeah, I don't know who's best to answer this, but is it a position that we are pretty confident we'd be able to find someone, this one, uh, the part-time beginning in January 1st, 2025. This is to bring it from six months to 12 months. So I'm assuming that would be starting in June at the beginning of this or July. Um, are we confident that we would be able to get um, that position filled? Is it a position that is tough to fill? New manager. Well, the chief recommended it. So I, I think he's fairly confident that uh, he can get somebody aboard. Um, 
but if he has any other information he wanted to share, but uh, he's confident that we get somebody aboard. Okay, thanks. Other discussion? Okay, so again, motion for us is to amend the budget to uh, increase part-time salaries position under police patrol from 19,438 to 38,876. If you're in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Yes. Cameron? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Charlie Catanzaro? No. <coughs> yes. All right, amendment is adopted. All right, other amendments for us this evening? Other amendments? Yes, Councilor Witham. I do, but they're under the school side, and I think that you're right. going to want to recuse yes, it. That I will recuse myself from that section, but still man the computer if everyone's all right with that, <laughs> um, and throw it over to my deputy mayor, Councilor Witham. I'll turn it over to other councilors first. Are there any proposed amendments on the school side of the budget? Uh, currently, it is amended by an additional $500,000, which was done at our last meeting. Seeing none from fellow counselors, I'll offer one up. I'll propose a net increase to the school department bottom line of $150,000. I'll second. Discussion. I'll just start by saying that, again, here we are back to that volume knob and what is the appetite of, of this council. Uh, This gets us to about halfway with what the school department suggested they really needed for their uh, operating budget. Um, it moves us into some element of those tier two uh, items, not all of them, um, but some of them. Uh, this additional 150,000 could fund couple two three extra positions uh, into that tier two that are slated to not be filled or eliminated as a result of, of the budget conversation again I know it doesn't turn the volume up enough it doesn't move the needle enough but it moves it some uh, and again I'm just trying to gauge the appetite of, of this body with regard to that again after all is said and done and I know we've made a few other little tweaks and adjustments here, but our estimated tax rate impact at the last meeting was at about $1.53. We've used some additional fund balance. We've made a number of other adjustments, and it's probably still likely uh, bringing it a little bit less than what we projected, uh, $1.51, so slightly less with all the adjustments that we've made. Um, that's all I'll say on the school department budget. Uh, I'm not sure what more I can add at this point. This is hard to do. Councilor Goodwin. <laughs> I guess I just know how the eyes might be inclined. Sorry, my was not on. Uh, my base inclination um, is that this is the right direction, but not as far as I would like to see I personally um, of the opinion that we should attempt to fund. Um, all of the tier two budget reductions with the exception of the SYC, which um, seems to have a comparable program to replace it. Uh, this takes us about halfway there. So I'm in support of, um, of this motion uh, as it's <coughs> heading in the right direction. But uh, you know, just transparently, I have an appetite to go slightly further because I think there are still uh, critical items in tier two that should be funded. Further discussion of council. Councillor Parity, Canton Zero, then Councillor Vincent. Um, just ditto to what Councillor Goodwin said. Um, I also uh, would like to fund even more than this. This, at just a glance, depending on what decisions are made, saves either two or three of these five and a half jobs that are in this tier. Um, so I'm certainly in support of this step. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Vincent, you're right. Thank you. So after the last meeting, I had a conversation with the person from the school board. 
and uh, it was brought to my attention, and I, and I did call the superintendent today about, um, there was a figure that was given to me that may, the school might not exhaust all that money, but then after have to talk with the superintendent, you know, there's nothing guaranteed, I mean, the year's not over yet, Um it was at the tune of about six hundred thousand, uh, but the, the superintendent doesn't feel that that that's going to be there because it's, you get you get several months left. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, we had a good conversation today, and I thank him for that. But there could be three hundred thousand left. Um, why do I bring it up? Is because you know you have this undetermined amount of money that's going to be coming from the state and the school, possibly. Um, we hold our breath on the state like we always do, which is not right. But I just want to uh, say this, um, that this counselor is not going to vote over the tax cap. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. You know, how I vote typically is I vote my conscience, my constituents, and that's how it goes. And at the state level, third is my party. Um, it's important because remember that the, the citizens came to the polls and they told us what they wanted. And to just have no consideration sometimes of that just upsets me. Um, I said it if it was an emergency situation. Um, and I suppose you could look at this as an emergency situation, you know. Um, but I don't look this as an emergency situation. So I'm, I'm singing a song that I've sung before, um, but I stick by what I say. Uh, I give good faith in our city manager who came up with a, a budget uh, that was pretty good, actually, in my, point, in my opinion. Um, and we get all nervous about the whole school thing, but then there's that undetermined part again. And I think, well, there's the 300000 possibly that could be there out of a good chunk of change. Um, so I hear counselors that want to increase it again. Uh, I guess that's fine. Uh, just that you know when it comes back around, uh, I guess we can, if there's money left over, we can take it back. If we don't have a flooding of people that come into this chamber and say that the uh, school ADISCRE funding b belongs to the school, it does. But when the city puts the money up front, it belongs back to the city. Thank you. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Councilor Gibson. I spent some time on the school board, so I know how hard putting a budget together is on that side. But I have to second Mr. Vincent's sentiments. Um, we have responsibilities to one primary group, the citizens of the city, to make the best decisions possible as we believe those citizens want. And I don't see a way that, from what I've been told by people, that they are really happy about a big bite coming out of them this year. So I would have to vote no on any further increase to the school side. Further discussion on the amendment? Oh, Councilor Pepin. Sorry. Thank you. I just got to say this about the tax gap. I've heard, I think we've been a couple couple budgets that we were under the tax gap. I was kind of like at the point saying, gee, we shouldn't even, we should increase it anyways, right up to the top because it's going to come back and bite us in the future. And this is where it's biting us in the future. So we've kind of like, taking the approach that we judge what we need in this community and we try to supply it to the best of our abilities and what we think the taxpayer can actually afford. Um, I also believe that education is a very big 
budget part, but it's also a very important factor in our city because that's what draws people into our community when they're looking to have families in their homes, educate their kids or whatever if they're looking to move. So one part, it is important, very important. I always try to look at the budget at the point to say, where is the need and what can the taxpayer afford? I've heard comments from, I hate to say it, Councilman Vincent here, that we'll never come up to the task cap ever again. And here we are, they have to over, override the task cap, and here we are. Uh, just because of the way the figures flow out throughout the years, things change. And I, I, I think we have to address the changes when it comes in. Do I like overriding the task cap? No, I think we've done it when we thought we needed it two times. And we've been very fortunate that we haven't had to do it in, in several years. I would love to approve the whole school budget, but I don't have that taste for it. Uh, I like the happy medium that Council Wortham come up with, and I still don't think that's enough for the school, school department, but I also got to look at the city side of it as far as the taxpayers. So um, I just wanted to, as, as far as I'm concerned about the tax gap, you can say before over it, under it, or whatever, to me, it just doesn't make any difference. I think you have to look at the needs of the city and what you're going to pay in the future. If we don't address the stuff today and kick the can down, well, sooner or later, the can's going to come back at you. So that's it. I'll say this, and I've said it before. If I took the time and looked through the pictures on my phone, I could look back 15 years or whenever it was when the proposed charter amendment for the tax cap was before the voters and uh, I painted many a sign in my basement opposed to the tax cap. Uh, uh, Mr. Real Roseberry, who was the uh, proponent of it, who led the charge on it, uh, God rest his soul, he passed away recently. Uh, Mr. Roseberry and I got along very well. Uh, we differed greatly in our politics. Uh, we were opposite ends of the magnet, uh, but we got along, and I respect him greatly for that. So uh, if there's a way for him to listen from where he is now, I, I hope he hears that because it's true. But one of the things that I remember about my conversations back then was that there was this escape valve built into the tax cap language that said if there was a need, there is the ability of this council to override. And when the voters voted on the tax cap, they voted for that provision to be in there. And as Councillor Pepin said, we've done it twice, at least in my time here, uh, to override the, the tax cap. Uh, I propose doing it again. And in both those cases, uh, I'll suggest to you that I sort of led the charge. And uh, I shared with Councillor Goodwin last week that in neither, neither case was I uh, strung to a pole and tarred and feathered in front of City Hall. It just did not happen, right? Uh, I'm not sure if I got fewer Christmas cards because of it, but eh, whatever, right? Uh, there's a need. Um, and let's be very clear that the struggles that we all have with the budget, none of us like dealing with the budget, right? Because at the end of the day, there are no winners. The tax rate goes up. We don't provide enough services. There's not enough money for what we want to do in the schools. No matter what happens, there's no winners in this game. I, I joked earlier in the mayor's office, I umpire a baseball. It's like umpiring a 27-inning game, and we get to the end, and everybody's tired and cranky and say, hey, heck with it, we're going to be tied, right? Everybody leaves there aggravated, and there's no winners. It's the same thing here, right? What I know is that the problems that are created in this community are not generated in this community. They're generated by the federal government and maybe even closer to home by our legislature, legis legislators in Concord who continue to not adequately fund education. Federal government does not adequately fund special education, which is a big part of this conversation. They say, yeah, we're not going to fund it in full. Or the state government says, we're not going to give you as much money to fund what you need to do, even though costs continue to go up. Uh, you can share that burden with your taxpayers. 
And that's the only place we can push this. So I think we're having a meaningful conversation here about how much Councilor Pepe and I appreciate where you're at. You know, uh, you'd love to fund them the whole way, as would I. Is there an appetite to do that? Probably not. But can we move the needle just a little bit more so we don't lose as many staff positions? And that's what uh, this amendment is about. Further discussion? Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Yeah, thank you. Um, wanted to make sure that everybody had a first chance he wanted to talk uh, before jumping back in. But um, just wow. Um, it's amazing to me that when we come to the school budget, that's when we talk about the tax gap. We just, all of us, voted to add a number of things on the city side. All of that's going to push us over the tax gap. Why is it the school's fault? <laughs> I could point to many, many, many things on the city side um, that could be on a tiered list like this that we could equally argue about. Um, so if we are okay funding some things but not the school, um, I wanna hear more ideas if some people are not willing to override the tax cap, where else is that gonna come from? Um, it sounds like there's not support from a few people for this. I'm with Councillor Goodwin. It needs to be much more. Um, we are talking about actual jobs being cut from the school, including ground maintenance position, um, para positions. It's, um, I mean, I, I really should clarify that these are um, potential budget cuts. I'm not the person making these decisions. Um, but I also would like to see everybody else's inboxes because I have gotten many, 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 many messages from parents, from people that work in the school, um, from citizens all over the community saying, please don't cut our school budget. Please save SYC. Thankfully, it sounds like there at least is something that is there to replace SYC. I have not gotten a single email saying, don't override the tax cap. I have not got that feedback. Um, so it's just amazing, both that we only talk about it when we talk about the school and that we're talking about it at all. Um, talk about a smoke show. The tax cap is not a real thing. <laughs> um, it's, it's not a real thing. When we get to the end of the year, half of these numbers aren't going to look the same. Um, we talk about the the money that comes from the state when they finally, finally give us a little bit more than we thought they might. Um, one of the reasons I ran for this seat is because there was a discussion around that money coming back and there were a lot of people that showed up and said that money belongs to the school. Um, I just think we're putting a lot of pressure on the school. Um, I want to bring people's attention to Forgive me, I forgot that I was, um, all right. The financial overview. Do you have a page reference, Council? Page reference, or it's in the B section. Say again. It's in the B section. B? B6, general fund exp expenditures. Um, I wish I could hold this in front of one of those. Do we have one of those projectors, old school? Um, for folks at home, if you can find this ginormous PDF, it's page B6, there is a picture on the bottom, which really drew my attention to it at first. It's, there is a seven year expenditure pattern. You can see that the blue line on top is the school, the green line is the city, and the red line at the bottom is the county. The city is going up on pretty much the same trajectory. The school from last year to this proposed budget is kept pretty much flat. The percent change of the school budget this year is an increase of 0.828%. The percent change for the city side of the budget is 3.641. Um, the city budget has, a, has increased much more percentage-wise so the question arises, since the school is the biggest part of the budget, maybe that just means the school part has a lot more dollars. Well, the dollar amount is right above that. The school budget increased $257,331. $257, the 
the city side of the budget increased 592,744. So the city side also increased more dollars wise, even though it's a much smaller piece of the pie. So it just, it really strikes me as interesting that it's only the school side of the budget that we're talking about as if it is the school board budget that is pushing us over when it's the city side. And I, like all of you, have gone through line by line, page by page, section by section. It's hard to pull stuff out because it's hard to pull stuff out. All of these things are needed services, including the school budget. Um, I, I just would like to hear more ideas if people are not willing to go over the tax cap and don't want to support this. Um, it's just very interesting who we put our faith in. I've heard that we're, you know, acting in good faith. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll say is if there's, you know, Councilor Vincent raised that the school has some money in the budget. I, I don't think it's up to us on the city side to make guesstimates. The school board and the school superintendent are the ones that put this together. This is what they say they need. We have over $5 million left over in our bank account. It's healthy to have something left over. So I don't think that we should not fund them if there's something left over in a budget that was made and passed and then, you know, many different things were changed to it. So um, if you couldn't guess, I'll be supporting this amendment and also hoping that we go further. Thanks. Further discussion, I saw Councilor Gibson first, then Councilor Cameron. I don't have historical numbers, but I do remember in years past that historically this council has very strongly supported the school budget at the cost to the city side. One of the reasons why our roads and other services on the city side suffered over the years was because counselors believed that they should fund the schools as best possible if it meant a few more potholes or worn out air packs for the fire department somehow we would muddle through with that um we've been playing catch up on the city side I don't know how long back it goes. Um, and sometimes, not um, trying to be selfish, but sometimes you make decisions as Councillor Vincent likes to sorry, as Councillor Whittem likes to say, there are winners, there are losers, and there's no win. Um, the decisions get made however they get made based on what people's beliefs are. Well done, Councilor. Yes. Councilor Cameron, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. I think no matter how we look at it, we're already over the tax cap, no matter what we do, whether it's the city that put us over, the school that put us over. We have to think about the total picture that all this money comes from the same pot. We have to spread it evenly somehow so that everybody is sort of a winner. Is that possible? Probably not, but maybe to help us sleep a little better at night? Yes. Um, Councillor Gibson, you brought up a few good points that, yes, over the years, the city side has suffered. At what expense, okay? And it's time to start getting that leveled out a little bit better than it has been over the years. We have to be mindful of the people that live here. You know, all of us, all of us that pay taxes, the people that want to move into this community, they're going to look at the tax rate. They may not want to come here because of some of that. We do have excellent schools. We really do. And 
Nobody wants to see anybody cut anything. But unfortunately, there are winners and losers. Thank you. For the discussion, I'll go with Councillor Goodwin, then Councillor Mishi. I guess I'll just add, um, and I'm hoping that we can wrap discussion for a vote here soon. But, um, <laughs> but um, I, I guess when folks or a couple of councillors have said, you know, people, we have to be mindful of, of um, the, obviously the tax rate, the tax burden. I fully understand and appreciate that. And, and but in terms of drawing people to our community, as someone that works in real estate, I can tell you one of the key factors that uh, families make when moving to a community is sure tax burden because it's part of their their payment but it's the quality of the school system overwhelmingly and not to disparage our school system but we are not a desirable school system in that market for young families you can argue with me but you ask a realtor there this is a community that is considered more affordable, it might be a good value, but it is not a, a school system that people are seeking out to get their children into. Uh, and that is, for a number of reasons, nothing we can solve tonight, um, but funding is absolutely part of that puzzle. So to make our community desirable requires us to fund the schools. And other than it just being the right thing to do, I'm a product of summers with schools, I attended first grade through high school. Um, I received a good education in a often challenging environment. Uh, I'm a product of the special education system. I had, uh, 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 what is it, IUD, IUD. IEP, <laughs> IEP, IUD, oh my god. <laughs> I, yeah, I, a little different. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, so, so I like, you know, I see like in the tier two budget reductions here, I see a special ed para. I would not be here without the special ed paras that followed me through school. I took an ex a much longer time to master the English language, if you can call that's what I have, um, the, than the average, the average person. And that took time and that time is money. And the city council, when I was a child was generous enough to fund that position to give me the opportunities that I now have. It's an investment in the future. I am but one representation of that. And I am sympathetic to the tax rate and the tax burden. I think this year is particularly challenging. Um, but, you know, 150 to me is the bare minimum that we can do at the, uh, to try and fund these tier two reductions. Um, and I will certainly be hoping that we can do more, but just to add a personal anecdote on why I believe it's important. Further discussion <laughs> on the amendment, which is for an additional 150,000 to the school department bottom line. Seeing none, city clerk will call the roll. Oh, oh, Council Mishu, I'm sorry, I forgot. I know I'm the silent one, but I must speak on this one. I really don't have a problem much with the school department because I know they're doing the best what they can. I mentioned it last week, and I'll mention it again tonight. My biggest problem are the pay raises. Council Wetham, we agreed with them on union negotiated. That's fine. My problem is the non-union, the administration, the pay raises that they're getting. We have no say whatsoever on that. It just happens. And I'm looking at it, it looks like the union members, the teachers, janitorial services, or anybody else with the union, they're getting like a 4% raise. But you some of the administrators getting close to 10%. That's my problem. If they would have wanted to give these administrators pay raises, I'm fine with it. If they would have gradually increased it over a period of two, three years, I'm fine with that. But coming at him, some of them getting it was from eight, nine, ten thousand. Right now, let's say they're getting 100000 right now. Come July 1st, some of them, at least one, is going to get at least 110 plus thousand. That's my issue. If they would have brought it up gradually, I wouldn't have no problem. But I'm really stuck right now because I really want to help them out. At least we got to take care of our kids in this community. But giving this money away this fast, the taxpayers need some relief also. Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment, Councillor Gibson. 
I appreciate what Councilor Gooden said. My son was on an IEP while he was in the Summersworth school system. And I can tell you from personal experience, it's a completely different environment now. You say that families aren't wanting to move here. My question would be then why do we consistently see an increase of families with special needs coming into this community? And please, like I said, my son was a special needs student, so I understand that. But this goes back to the whole issue of the funding formulas for schools that if you do something reasonably well, you pay the price. And I have nothing against anybody when I say that, and I'm going to probably end up sounding like a jerk as I say it. But the taxpayers of Summersworth end up supporting that burden. And it's really tough, particularly with retired people, to go to them and say, hey, reach into your pocket and dig out a little bit more. And, you know, people talk about percentage increases this, dollars increases that. Still, the city side of the budget is very small compared to the school side, no matter how you cut it. And to have some increases in it, that's going to happen no matter what you do. It's just a matter of how much you can bite off. Thank you. Council, let me show you are recognized. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Council Gibson. I'll tell you why special needs students move to the city of Summersworth. Because the people right there, school board, they're one of the best in this area that support these special needs people, and they know it. That's why they move here, because they know they'll get the best education that they can get compared to other communities in this area. So I have to thank you guys for what you're doing for special needs students. Excellent. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, and I agree with that 100%. I just wish some of them would stay. And I don't mean to be uh, heartless. It seems like they come in and get what they need, and then they move on. That's not what, but thank you for bringing that up, Council Mishu, but that's not what I want to speak. You know, um, I guess this might be along the lines is that I would love to be able to support the school to the full, just as long as we don't go with the tax cap. However, because I've got it. I have it. I'm pretty well off. There's a bunch of other people on this council that are pretty well off too. But I have to think for the people who don't have it. That's why, that's why I've been elected. I'm, I'm serving the people, not only the rich, but the poor. We talk about giving money to the, to the food bank. We talk about money to the homeless. Those people are there for a reason. You think they just are there because they just suddenly ran out of money? They probably gave and gave and gave, and then now that's what it's come to. So I have to look at both sides. I'm not anti-school. You know, I, I, I hear what the counselor here to my left, two down, is, is saying about the whole pie. But the school budget's bigger than the city side. And I, I just, I get it, you know. But it's like I try to think for all the people that can't be here because they don't have a car to get here because they've had to pay more money for taxes. I'm just trying to be realistic. And one final say is that, and I know this would probably never happen, but it would really, and, and you know, and not being on the school side, it would be nice that if the school systems, not just here, everywhere, came up with some type of overhaul. Uh, maybe it's impossible and am I naive, but I just, I try to think that way to try to not reinvent, uh, try, try to reinvent things that are, are possible. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. Councillor Pepin, thank you for being patient. You're recognized.
Your mic counselor, excuse me. My wife worked in special education and I'll tell you, I don't care what kind of money you have, but even today, sometimes my wife don't get out very often and stuff like that. But every so often we'll go into a place and we'll meet one of our old students and they'll come running and grab a hold of her and hug her to death. Uh, and there's no money that you can take away from that. Uh, that that it, it's, it's just so gratifying, at least to my wife and to me, to see some, the special education students achieve and, and make themselves something out of it. Summerswood does have a good education, special education. I, and I, I do think people come here because of the education system. I don't want to do anything to damage that either. Um, Council Vincent, me and you have locked horns time and time before, and it was, and, and I still love you too, so I, I put it that way. But one one thing I, I, I will say, Council Vincent, I'll speak to it right now. I look, try to look out for the taxpayers of the city of Somersworth. Uh, they've let, been fortunate enough, they've left me several times. I've overrode the tax cap. I hope they look at me to say that I'm trying to use good judgment and trying to balance the budget and trying to meet all the needs that the city needs. And and I think just because you vote over a tax cap doesn't mean that you're not trying to do your job as a city councilor and, and trying to do the best for the city. That's all I got right now. It's a baseball thing. When you're the umpire and you make the play, half the field likes you the other half does not like you and that's true here as well there are so many analogies i could speak forever about the value of schools about the impact on taxes i think we've beaten the drum to death uh, so with that i will call a vote city clerk will call the roll yes 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 no no Yes. Yes. The amendment is adopted. Are there any further amendments to the school department bottom line? Councilor Parity Catton Zero, you're recognized. Yes, I'd like to make an amendment to add one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to the school budget. Um, that would be the rest of tier two minus SYC. Motion by Councilor Parity Catton Zero to add an additional hundred and sixty thousand to the school department bottom line. Is there a second? Yes. Seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Discussion. Councilor you're recognized. Um I think I said most of my piece in the last in the last time here, but um, you know, again, we have all voted in support of things that have gone over the tax cap. These are positions that people who are paid to make these decisions have said we need. Um, and this isn't even coming up to the, um, what's it called, the superintendent's recommended budget. This is just um, saving those five and a half jobs. Further discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. 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 The amendment is not adopted. Are there any further amendments to the school department bottom line? Seeing that, I'll turn the meeting back over to Councillor Gerding. I mean, Mayor Gerding, sorry, former council. Just demoted you. It's bad. <laughs> There was nothing there for a moment. You were the mayor. Um, let me just quick edit this. Apologize. All right. So, got a number of amendments up here. I will open it one more time to further amendments, city or revenue. And obviously, if you have a schools amendment that you are now realizing you should have had earlier, you can absolutely do it. I'll turn it back over to Councilor Witham. But are there other further amendments tonight. Okay. Seeing, do you have a further amendment? No, Council? I have a motion. Okay. All right. Without that, I will be looking for a motion on the budget. Motion to adopt uh, the FY25 ordinance as amended. 
right. Motion by Councilor Witham to adopt the budget as amended, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Discussion. Councilor Witham. Thank you. Just uh, a parliamentary inquiry, if I could, Your Absolutely. Honor. Absolutely. Obviously, Councilor Messier is not with us tonight, but was signified in the role as being absent. So it still is a council of nine members. Uh, so this would require an override vote of two thirds. So it is still six votes. Correct. Uh, so it is six of eight. Six of eight. Correct. Um, Third discussion. Councilor Gibson. Question. Yes. I thought it what the override required the two thirds of councilors voting present. It's of elected membership. So elected okay. membership is nine as of right now. Yes, Councilor Parity Catton Zero. Um, yeah, another process question. Um, is there a separate vote that should be taken before the budget is passed that is just to the question of a tax cap override or is the budget itself just understood that it needs a two thirds majority and that contains within it a tax cap override? Yes, the latter. So as um, it has been amended, we would require the two thirds to pass this budget and to pass the motion that was put forward tonight. Got it. Thank you. Other questions or other comments, Councilor Witham? Yes, before the vote, it, would it be in order to have the finance director just to do a quick summary yeah. of what we've done here tonight Definitely. and where we stand? I know it's captured on your spreadsheet, but perhaps absolutely it would finance be good to articulate Smith. that. Smith. <clears throat> so right now the uh, budget as amended is $59,385,023. Um, tax rate impact is um, a dollar fifty one. It would put you at thirty dollars and eighty one cents, and you would be overriding the tax cap by a net amount of four hundred eighty one thousand nine hundred thirty eight dollars. So again, yeah, for those watching at home, it's described in the spreadsheet. For those here, it's in front of us here on the screen at the bottom. Other discussion. Councilor Witham. I'll piggyback on Councillor Pepin here for just a second. Thank you, Councillor, for, for teeing it up. Um, I take what I do here in council chambers, quite frankly, in life, very seriously. Um, the responsibilities that I have here are, are what I am paid the least for, $81.04 a month. Uh, but it doesn't minimize the importance of this. Uh, Councilors are right. There are people in the community that struggle to make ends meet, and there are others that do not. And there's a whole bunch of people somewhere in the middle. I think when elected to office, people elect me to make informed, guided, thoughtful decisions, some of which they may agree with, some of which they may not. It's like being a baseball umpire. Right? There's a lot of lessons on the ball field in life, and uh, I will go to those <laughs> routinely. Um, I get that this is an override, but again, the tax cap has a provision for that. If this vote passes here tonight through a supermajority, it will only be the third time since the tax cap was enacted that this council ever chose to take such action. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none, again, this will be a two-thirds vote. We will need six to pass as it's amended. If you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 9-24, fiscal year 2024-2025 budget as amended, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Zinka? No. No. Yes. Yes. All right. Congratulations, everyone. We had the six votes we needed. The uh, fiscal year 2024 2025 budget has been adopted. Pat yourselves on the back. That was a lot of work. All right. So that will move us on to agenda item six which is comments by councillors. Uh, we'll start on the uh, ward side, Councillor Pepin. I have nothing this evening. <laughs> uh, Councillor Vincent. I have nothing. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. 
Nothing more. Thank you. Councillor Parody Cotton Zero. I have something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Of course. I do indeed. Um, yeah, I was going to mention this during the vote itself, but it was just a general um, comment. There were a few other items that we had identified before that I had flagged um, and just wanted to make sure that I closed the loop on that. One of them was parking enforcement. Um, given all of the discussion tonight and the appetite uh, did not seem there to continue adding things, um, that is still just a part-time position. Um, but I did want to bring up that we had previously discussed in economic development, potentially working with um, the town of Berwick across uh, the river here on parking enforcement and even potentially communications, marketing, economic development, a few different things that we've had um, in the past and or have part-time funded. So I look forward to creative ways um, to funding that, but I just wanted to acknowledge um, for folks that that is a really big issue to them. Um, why I did not bring that up tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Mishu. Nothing this evening. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Witham. I just want to say thank you to my fellow councillors for their candor. Uh, you, you spoke the way that you felt tonight um, and uh, for your thoughtful process in that, whether or not it aligned with my thoughts or not, I appreciate uh, your perspective, certainly. Um, and uh, thank your honor for the approach that you took to the budget. Uh, to help guide it in a thoughtful, calm way, which I think is important. So uh, I applaud you for your work on that. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Goodwin. Uh, also a round of thanks to uh, Your Honor. Uh, agreed on your approach being uh, proactive and um, respectful. Uh, also to Councilor Witham, who uh, took the, <clears throat> the time to put his thoughts on paper and provide a structure uh, for which us to negotiate off of essentially tonight, which was incredibly useful just to have some sort of guiding thing, whether or not you agreed with it. Um, so thank you for taking the time to do that. <clears throat> and um, also a thank you to uh, Councillor Cameron uh, and her efforts on the Don't Trash Summersworth, which recently had a very successful inaugural event, which I'm sure she will talk about. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Cameron, I can't wait to hear. <laughs> well, since he brought it up, yes, I want to thank everybody that showed up for our first Don't Trash Summersworth. We had 12 volunteers, 20 bags of trash, and one hour. So we didn't get as far as we wanted, but we're meeting once a month, third Saturday of the month, so there'll be more opportunities for you to join us. Thank you. Great. And before we go to adjournment, I would also like to just thank this council for your hard work on this budget. I certainly... I'm so well aware of how difficult this decision was uh, to not only override the tax cap, but to make the changes that you made. I am so, so thankful to uh, each and every one of you for you know taking the time to really focus on this. Uh, I appreciate the speed at which we went tonight. I know it made for a long night, but I think that um, we all were thoughtful in our decision making. Um, I think that uh, every single one of you communicated your needs effectively. Uh, I definitely don't know if it was whether that the heating system was fixed or whether the cooler heads prevailed, but the room was much cooler today, so I appreciate that. Um, and I am uh, just ever thankful that this budget process is over. <laughs> um, and thanks to the school uh, board and the school uh, um, uh, departments as well because I know it was equally as difficult on their end so thank you all for the tough decisions that you all had to make as well um, but with that I will be looking for a motion for adjournment Councilor Witham moves the council stand in adjournment seconded by Councilor Mishu all in favor of adjournment please state by saying aye aye, aye. opposed state nay Councilor is adjourned <laughs>